Hey there, it's Hardcore Sustainable. A few days ago I had the opportunity to get a tour of a new house that's being built here at Dancing Rabbit called Subhub. This house is being built by one of our members and a natural builder, Liz Hackney. This building as the name would imply, is intended to be a hub for a sub-community. So here at Dancing Rabbit, um, not everybody has everything they need built into their house. So they might not have a shower, they might not have bathrooms or a kitchen. And so what we tend to do is build uh, specific buildings that can provide those resources for groups of people instead of everybody having to have a separate one in their house. So sometimes I like to show you all a work in progress, like with Subhub, and then come back later on after the building's been finished. Now this is a beautiful sunny fall day, but I did this tour a few days ago and it was kind of cloudy and gloomy. How you doing, Liz? Uh, come here to see Subhub and find out the progress of your, your work here on, on your beautiful building. Yes, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're giving Dan a tour today and showing everyone um, some of the things we've been working on. Our project is called Subhub, and it's a natural building, straw bale building here. And um, I wanted to start on the outside of the building to uh, to just draw attention to how we put lime plaster on the outside. Um, lime plaster is a very durable product, but it still allows whatever little moisture gets into the straw bale walls to come out eventually. So we call this breathing. So let's go inside. Um, we've been working on this project for two and a half years now and we've got probably at least another year left. There's a lot of things we're doing with this project actually. We are trying to model natural building techniques. Uh, we're trying to hire as many women as possible in the village to train them to do natural building and construction. Eventually we would like to um, have a co-op kitchen here People here eat in co-op kitchens and it's a it's a group experience for eating that we do here. And we'd also like to um, host classes, permaculture classes, social justice classes, and have this kind of be a focal point for those kinds of things. We have this concept at DR about sharing resources, and that means consolidating energy, high energy use um, functions in one building, like our common house, which has uh, radiant floor heating, it has um, washer and it has uh, showers and things like that, all in one building. And that way we can build our houses here that are personal homes. We can build them smaller. We don't have to have full kitchens and full bathrooms because we can use the common resources for that. So the, the same concept here where we're going to have a shower and a full kitchen and a kitchen co-op uh, where people can come and eat here. And um, the concept is the same where we're hoping that people who build nearby uh, can build simpler, smaller houses um, using less, fewer resources because they can come here and use them. How yeah. many people do you imagine will be able to use this building? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, somewhere between six and ten people, I would imagine, okay. um, depending on who's living here. Yeah, that remains to be seen, but it seems like there, we, we can use another co-op kitchen here. This building has a lot more systems in it than a personal home. So for example, in a few weeks, we're going to start building a masonry heater, a very energy efficient or efficiently burning wood stove. It's really large. You, have, you, can, you only need to fire it up every other day. It uses less firewood um, because it burns more efficiently. 
Uh, we have radiant floor tubing in here. We have tubing where we run warm water through the tubes and the cob subfloor absorbs that heat and then releases it uh, in, at a slow, even rate. We also tried to have redundant systems here. So we, we plan on heating our water with a solar water heater. And there are times of, in the winter where it's too cloudy for solar. And so we put in the masonry heater and we're planning on running copper tubing um, on the back of it uh, to heat our water. So we have both. Uh, so no matter how cold it gets or cloudy in the winter time, we can have warm water. So we're going to do uh, rain catchment. So rain will um, come off the roof and be caught and or filtered and then put into a cistern and then pumped to the shower and the kitchen. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we, we haven't put our cistern in yet. We'll do that in the spring, probably. It's a long process to get electricity here at, at Dancing Rabbit. And uh, we're, we're hoping that within the next week or so um, that we'll be hooked up to our local electrical grid. And we are going to have solar panels on the roof. And uh, most people have solar panels. They're feeding into that system. Um, but we have been talking about do going DC and or even partially DC for some of the higher energy appliances that we're going to have. And so we haven't really made a decision about that. We're still looking into that. Oh, I can talk about the natural system of the building itself, which is um, why we use a straw bale and why we use the cob plaster and the lime. One thing that is really great about it is that the clay plaster helps regulate the temperature and the humidity inside the building, whether it's too dry in the winter or it's too uh, humid in the summer, and allows a lot more air exchange with the outside environment. So there's always fresh air coming in here. And the straw bales, of course, insulate and keep whatever heat we are having in here or whatever cool air is in here in the building. And we, we did notice that as soon as we enclosed the walls to the upstairs and we had windows and doors in place here downstairs, and we had uh, plaster on all the walls, it started interacting with the outside temperatures. So all through the summer, when it was 90 degrees outside, here it was a nice cool temperature in here. Very pleasant place to work. And we went from um, a scratch coat, which is the, the second coat on the interior walls of clay plaster, and we put our finished plaster on, which is uh, a different recipe. It includes cow manure, and this gives the plaster a really smooth, glowing kind of look to it. So the, the appearance of the walls this season has really changed. This is what they will look like. We also um, put in a, a finished earthen floor on this kitchen. This is the kitchen. And then on top of it, we mortared tile. So that's, that's uh, what we spent a lot of the June and July doing. I mean, everything we do here is new. We're relatively inexperienced. So one of the things we did is we try to follow the guidelines for natural building here at Dancing Rabbit, which is to use local reclaimed products and natural materials. So all the ceilings downstairs are made out of reclaimed pallet wood that we denailed and, and sanded and stained. One of the funnest things we did this season was um, these bottle walls. So for, this is part of the bathroom wall. We did a light clay straw infill wall where you put forms up and you, you tamp down a mix of, of straw and water and clay. And then after a few days, you take the form off and you're left with a, a pretty nice smooth wall. And then up here, a different clay recipe that's got a lot of um, sand, clay, and a lot of long straw, uncut straw. And this makes for a really dense clay plaster and it holds, it holds the wall up, holds the bottles up. And then we moved on to this second 
cob bottle wall. And this is, this form is going to form a wall between the hall and the living room. The building is divided into three. We've got the kitchen, we've got the bathroom hall, and then we've got uh, the living room. Uh, we also have an upstairs where we have two lofts and a storage area. And we're hoping to um, host uh, work exchange people um, and, and house them here. So now we're up in the lofts, one of the lofts on the east side. And uh, this, this loft has a, a low ceiling. Um, we are the fourth people to own this building and work on it. The original owners weren't going to have a second story and we decided to put some lofts in here and so we ended up with a lower ceiling. On the, the flooring here, we have heart pine, longleaf heart pine, I think they call it, which was salvaged from a barn that had been, uh, they had put their, this flooring in that barn in around 1880 and, uh, and the wood was salvaged and then we bought it. So to us, this floor is pretty special. We also have, in each loft, we have a, a, a ledge, a sleeping ledge. And uh, so on a hot night, you can go out here. You can spend some time out here. In the wintertime, the view is really great because you can see all the way across. Oh, nice. Yeah. A little bit like a tree house. Mm -hmm. The loft, actually, on the, on the west side is much more completed. And so what, what you're seeing when you're walking up to the building is uh, the same sleeping ledge that you saw upstairs. And there's a railing that Graham built and then he screened it in. So that's what you're seeing is that that's mm -hmm. screened in. Mm -hmm. And that way you can go out there and sleep without being eaten alive by mosquitoes. And uh, what is your natural building history and experience? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, this all started because I, uh, well, I moved to DR. I had no intention of building. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'm an acupuncturist, so maybe I'll build uh, a healing center and, and share it with, uh, there are people here who do the massage. Then I sort of gravitated to, because I have a natural interest in interior design. I've done, I've looked at interior designs my whole life. And um, I decided it would be fun to build a building and I couldn't find anyone here to build with me because I wanted to learn it. I wanted to be an owner builder and I couldn't find anyone who was interested in, in having the owner be part of the project. And uh, so I got mad. Um, I mean, I got really angry about being limited. And so I decided to, um, to buy this partially finished building um, to help you know, get it finished, but also just so I could learn. So I have a kitchen remodel in Berkeley, where I'm from, um, under my belt. And otherwise, I'd, you know, I, I didn't know how to use any power tools. Uh, I had no um, experience in natural building. Most of the crew have no experience starting out and we're really um, open and interested in having people come here and, and get training. Um, and also because it's a lot of fun. I have really had a lot of fun and joy in this project. And after two and a half years, I have experience now. And I've been assisting with, uh, like when we have natural building workshops here, people come and work on our project as part of the workshop. And I'm looking forward to starting to maybe teach some workshops in, uh, going forward. So what resources then have you used to learn? I mean, did you go to any workshops yourself or did you um, just get it from books or talking to people? Or? Well, when I started this project, um, I had been in acupuncture school for seven years. So I'm sort of allergic to classes. I don't, I don't like the class format myself. Do, learning by doing is really um, what I like to do right now. And so, yeah, we, uh, we read, um, we, we Google, we watch videos, um, we talk to people, we have a mentor who is an experienced builder who we meet with about once a quarter, and uh, he helps us steer clear of some major mistakes that we might make. Yeah, a lot of videos. And also Googling um, the names of things, like somebody will say, oh, you need a, a, a such and such, lug screw or something and uh, i won't know what that looks like or uh, so i'll i'll google it to see what it's you know anyway so it's a lot of research yeah 
I want to thank Liz for opening up her building to us and giving us a tour of the progress so far. We'll definitely be revisiting Subhub after it's finished to give you an update and to see it in operation as a sub-community resource. Until then, keep watching Hardcore Sustainable, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and if you want to help fund the creation of more videos, go to patreon.com slash hardcore sustainable and become a patron. Another way to support my channel is by hiring my bookkeeping services. All my bookkeeping is solar powered, so if you have a small business and need to get your books in order, or don't want to do your books yourself, go to soulpowerbookkeeping.com for more info. Keep it radical, keep it hardcore, change your own life for the better, and the world will inevitably get better.